When my brother Andy and I were growing up, our family lived in an old Victorian-style home located in Baltimore, Maryland. It was secluded, with our nearest neighbor being maybe two miles away. We would spend most of our days outside in the treehouse our father had built as we made up stories about pirates and treasures. However, the most exciting thing about our home was Mother. Not our real mother, our other mother. She was so kind and nurturing and always looked out for us. At night, we would hear a soft humming sound that seemed to be coming from all around our home. It would lull us all to sleep, enveloping our minds with such a calmness that we barely had any dreams. Only the soft, sweet hum from mother. Some nights, though, Andy and I would startle awake, both having had the same nightmare. We both dreamed about not being able to breathe, as if someone had placed a bag over our heads. We would always wake up right before we died. The mornings after these nightmares, we would wake up to find Mother had left us a tasty treat, usually a blueberry muffin, our favorite. She wanted us to be happy and forget about the terrible dreams. When we moved into our home, our parents had found an old rustic nightstand in the attic. They loved it so much that they placed it in the far corner of the living room. My real mother said it was a vintage accent piece. Whenever we were in the living room, engrossed in our newest Atari game, Mother would slowly push the nightstand towards us, moving it all the way to the very middle of the room, pushing one of us out of the way before it stopped. We would laugh and place it back into the corner. She was always doing silly things like that, letting us know she was there. We didn't mind, of course. It was nice knowing that she was around. We would often tell our parents about Mother, and how she was so kind, leaving us treats in the night. They would always comment about how active our imaginations were, adding in how we needed to stop getting into the pantry at night. We eventually grew up and moved out of our family home, leaving poor mother behind. We could feel her sadness as we packed our bags on what would be our last night home. We moved into an apartment together in the east side of town, but we never forgot about Mother. Years later, I was going to write my college thesis on my childhood, how I was basically raised by a ghost. While looking up our family home, I stumbled across an article online written about the original family that lived there, a heartbroken widow her husband killed at war in 1915. I began scanning the article more thoroughly. I was so excited to find out everything I could about the woman who helped in the upbringing of my brother and I. I thought to myself, maybe she couldn't have children, and that's why she took such good care of us. I couldn't have been more wrong. As soon as I reached the end of the story, I was mortified. A lump began to form in the back of my throat as my heart sank deep in my chest. The article stated that the widow, never having been able to get over her husband's death, had murdered her two children. She had smothered them with a pillow in their sleep, singing to them ever so sweetly, as she always did. After they had died, the widow hung herself, too distraught with grief. The article, uncensored, 
included a photo of our living room in which my brother and I used to play. In the middle of the room was our loving mother, dangling from the wooden beam our father had turned into a ceiling fan. Just beneath her, tipped over on its side, was the old rustic nightstand that my own mother was so fond of. It was sitting exactly in the middle of the room.